Global Clinicians, this is Ali Nese, and I wanted to talk to you today about a new set of files that are going to be launched by Brasser USA that we've helped uh, develop for them over the past year or so, and these are the Endosequence CM Taper files. And the Endosequence CM Taper files are essentially analogs of a variable taper preparation uh, that you can get using any of the major variable taper preparation file systems out there, such as the ProTaper system. Now, uh, you may say that, wait a minute, I thought endosequence was primarily constant taper, and that is true over the past 20 years and now over 2,000 lecture hands-on courses that we've done over Wildendo nationally. We've always trained people with all our faculty to teach constant taper preparations. And it's true that constant taper preparation and variable taper preparation essentially achieve the same thing of achieving shapes. The real success comes from your disinfection and irrigation capability. But what's the difference between a constant taper preparation and a variable taper preparation is that a constant taper preparation is much easier to obturate. Also, fitting a post and so on afterwards is a lot easier with that. And that's part of the reason why the sequence system is focused primarily on constant taper preparations. But we now understand that so many of you out there are fans of variable taper preparations and use it with vertical condensation and, and warm techniques and we've been asking us to kind of develop a system that's analog to that but that could be then used with hydraulic condensation and that's basically the end of sequence CM taper files that allow you to do exactly that. So in this system, you have a set of files that are variable taper and kind of follow the same geometrical sizing and also labeling, if you will, as the pro taper system. And these have the CM metallurgy, so the equivalent to the gold, but it's actually a little bit more flexible because the CM technology is uh, focusing more on flexibility than purely torque resistance. And as a result, it's important also, just like the pro taper system, to hand instrument the canals up to a size 15 so that you can have an adequately large large path before you can get into the larger sizes of this file so you can reduce the amount of unwinding that we'll get with these files. But remember that with the CM technology, unwinding in itself is not a problem because it's very different than austenitic files. When they unwind, it means that it's going to break. But when martensitic files uh, unwind, uh, essentially it's just because of the fact that torque resistance is lower in these set of files. I think before talking too much about it, it's probably best to show you a clinical technique and a case that I just did recently, and I wanted to share it with you. It's a basic molar, so it's nothing really too complicated, uh, but it's the kind of case you get run into every day, and I think it's a good case to showcase the endosequence CM taper file. So let's take a quick look at that. All right, so this is a patient with a mandibular left second molar, tooth number 18, that was referred following a pulpotomy after a painful episode by his general dentist who went in there and did a pulpotomy and then sent the patient over for root canal therapy. So this is the tooth, and as you can see, it's a fairly straightforward molar. You have a distal and mesial root with gentle curvature on the mesial and a previous cotton and cavit from the initial pulpotomy procedure. There's a peripical lesion around the distal. So the 3D uh, image shows us the confirmation that there is a little bit of a, um, um, a little bit of bone resorption at the apical area. And there is on this uh, image from the sagittal section, you can see a little bifurcation right at the apex of the distal root. Uh, but generally, uh, the, and the mesial roots seem to kind of uh, come together uh, with a common exit, uh, apparently, but, uh, uh, and then looking at the axial section, you can see the cotton cavity, but perhaps not adequate removal of all the decay yet. And you can see the joining of the mesial roots and that area of bifurcation right at the apex of the distal root with a peripical lesion. Just part of the reason why the tooth was still sensitive to percussion, the patient was having discomfort there. So, uh, cases like this, you want to go in there knowing what's happening, and since we're using the taper files uh, that kind of create a traditional vertical condensation technique, maybe we can do a vertical condensation technique or warm hydraulic condensation technique, better yet, on the distal root. As usual, we start with our isolation, primary isolation, and using the saber cut burr from the Rewild Endo Access Kit to remove the cotton and cavit, modify the axis preparation since there was still a couple of triangles of dentin that were hanging in there and preventing straight line axis, which is a key, key component of all good axis. I go ahead and give our secondary isolation. You can see now we can see the orifice of these canals with some pulp tissue in there on the mesial still. And we're gonna use these taper files and these new control flex acu files, which you can see are files that have a uh, cutout area on the handle where your apex locator can connect to. 
As I mentioned before, the endosequence CM taper files have the same naming and design as the regular Pro Taper Gold files with the S1, S2, and uh, F1, F2, and F3. I'm using the endosync here for uh, for using the setting at 300 RPM and a torque of 0.2. Now you could use a higher torque if you want. I'm, I'm, you can actually use these uh, files almost for reciprocating in a forward direction if you set the torque limit of the OTR pretty low to 0.2. So 300.2 or 300.6 if you're a little bit more experienced in molars and uh, you can go to 500 RPM in anteriors and premolars. So as usual, we start with the SX, which is the orifice opener, and open up the top. It's very important to have straight line coronal access, and you can see that we're kind of confirming that we have a straight line coronal access uh, with any of the potential coronal restrictions eliminated. That's an important thing before we get in there and start to do our hand instrumentation. Now, one thing that's critical about the uh, this system and technique is you gotta instrument canals to a size 10 or ideally a 15 hand file so that you can have a very good uh, and safe instrumentation experience. So we're gonna go based on our estimated working length from the radiograph that we did, uh, we looked at and then we confirmed with the CBCT. And now here we're using the EndoSync AI, connecting it directly to the side of these control fix accu files to read the reading and then adjust the stopper. And as usual, I like to also get the analog reading on my EndoRing uh, ruler, which is a very accurate and to the half millimeter accuracy. And then proceed to instrument these uh, all these three canals that we've found so far to a size 15 hand file. That's a critical thing. You gotta really get these canals to a size 15 hand file for both the endosequence taper files as well as the traditional pro taper files to do a safe job of instrumenting. Then we proceed to get the S1 down using again the same uh, type of a rhythm motion that I have recommended. Now this is on the endo uh, sync. Uh, and that's why it's as it's basically reaching the apex the file is coming to a stop so that's just the kind of a backup with that reading of course i'm also paying very close attention to my stoppers but i'm also using the endosync ai here as a um, additional confirmation that i'm at the apex this is just for demonstration reason uh, it's usually better to just have the ai off and just instrument to your uh, uh, stopper and that working link. So irrigate and move on to the second one, to the S2. And these files have progressive tapers that are different. These first couple of files give you just the scouting of the apex while enlarging the coronal part of the tooth and the mid portion of the tooth. And that allows the next set of finishing files to go further in. So again, just the same kind of idea of instrumenting taking the files out after three strokes, like the rhythm motion, and then using the endo swipe to remove the debris from the files to clean out the chip space. That's a critical component of all instrumentation in my experience. And uh, now we've moved on to uh, from, S, um, from the F1 to the F2. Uh, and now we're gonna be instrumenting using the F2. And the F2 is one of the finishing files. Most of the time on a molar, the F2, once you reach with the F2 to the apex, you are pretty much set to uh, to finish. In this particular case on the distal, we had fairly large canal, so I decided to go move on to the F3 for a little bit of larger preparation. Of course, it's very important throughout the process, you move from one file to the other to continue to irrigate and remove the debris from the canal using the ultrasonics, using irrigation in a positive and negative pressure way. And then at this point, now the F3 is now moving down very nicely. And these files now at this point with the F3 is cutting a fairly aggressive kind of a preparation. Again, remember that these types of files were originally designed for warm vertical condensation. So you're going to end up getting a fairly robust preparation. As you can see here, I'm fitting in 3006 in those sequence gutta percha cones or BC cones in order after finishing with an F3. And here's the preparation. You can see that those, uh, they're fitted nicely. And we do our final disinfection of the root canals and dry the canal with paper points and start to inject a BC sealer with the, this is the high flow using the minimal waste tip, injecting only in the coronal half for safety reason, making sure you have a loose needle in the canal. And then I use one of the taper files or another file that's clean. You put that in reverse in the endosync plus or in the endosync 
cutting in counterclockwise direction and at this point then are using your file at 300 rpm as a lenchelo that's going to be used to just coat the canal walls gently. Then you take your coated cones and seat them to the full working length, confirming that they're fully seated to the end. And then I'm just here, I'm just taking a confirmation radiograph as well. We can see that uh, they're all seated and I'm going to proceed to do, as I mentioned, the distal using the Endo Pro 270. And actually I've gone in using warm hydraulic condensation because of that bifurcation that we saw on the image on the distal. I wanna get, as I've shown in previous videos, the one where I was at the ESC, you're gonna end up getting a little bit more hydraulic pressure if you're doing warm hydraulic condensation, which is no longer, no more than about four millimeters of condensation into the canal, deeper four to five millimeters. It's not a full traditional vertical condensation where you are about four to five millimeters from the apex. This is about only four to five millimeter from the top. Condense that down and then use your uh, pluggers to condense it and backfill here and then now cleaning the debris. Here what I'm doing is I etched and I'm using the L-Bond by 3M here to just kind of um, do a bonding agent. In this particular case, because this patient was going to be waiting a little while, uh, I decided to just put a bonding agent for the BC liner instead of just using BC liner's own dual cure setting reaction. And also what's nice when you're using a bonding agent is you can actually avoid having a matrix band because you can create and build and bond using your light. Because remember, when you use a bonding agent, you don't need to wait 35 to 40 seconds for the etching and bonding to take place before you light cure it. So here it is, and we just used essentially the, the rubber dam here as the matrix band. Since it's going to get a crown, it's not a, it doesn't matter. You don't have to have that sh that's such a precision for uh, your contacts, because this tooth is going to get a crown. And here it is, it moved on. And you can see on the distal, we did get that bifurcation. We have that little, division at the apex, the curve is filled very nicely. But I also wanted to just kind of quickly tell you that this patient had previously a uh, root canal by myself about a year ago and was now in for a recall or a follow-up. Since this patient in for the root canal on the lower left side, I decided that I'm gonna take an image of the treated tooth on the upper right side. And you can see this tooth now is restored and has a, uh, a root canal is doing well and it's healing well and you can see the big curvature that's present at the apex of this tooth. Now this procedure was done using the blend protocol, which is different obviously than the end of sequence taper. And I'm going to do a video for you to show you how this tooth was moved from this initial state to this uh, final state using the blend protocol. And as you saw with the follow-up that I saw today. But before we do that video, I wanted to share these new files, these new set of in the sequence CM taper files with you that I used in the same patient using the endo sequence taper files and the previous time it was used the endo sequence blend protocol. As we saw, these instruments were able to predictably shape the canal to a F3 and we managed to kind of fill using hydraulic condensation, then use a little bit of a warm hydraulic condensation in the distal, which is, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is the equivalent of just kind of burning down with a little bit more apical pressure. Instead of finishing with the cold hydraulic condensation you sear off at the orifice, with the warm hydraulic condensation you sear off about four or five millimeters uh, into the canal and then you can backfill that space. And that is so that you can get a little bit extra hydraulic pressure. And in this particular case, as you saw, because of the presence of that um, um, type four division at the apex, I wanted to exert a little bit more apical pressure. But the other things that you saw in this video is the introduction of the new and will be launched very soon, AccuFile ControlFlex files. And these files are really helpful because of the fact that you have that exposed area of the handle that you can use to clip your apex locator and get the reading. And the reason for that is because in the posterior area of the mouth, where you end up having longer roots sometimes in some molars, but you don't have enough access for using a 25 millimeter hand file, so you can clip your apex locator and have enough room for the clip of the apex locator and the stopper to get adequate reading. Here, you'll be able to use a 21 millimeter file, and instead of clipping on the shank of the file, you're able to essentially just uh, clip the handle and get your reading from there. So it allows you, this set of files that allow you to use um, shorter files to measure your working length. And that's 
useful in patients that have limited opening. And also, as a side benefit, these files are very uh, competitively priced, and that's a very nice thing always. So anyway, so uh, we now have a variable taper instrumentation system in the mix in the endo sequence system, which is very useful and ha helpful to have for many people that like them, along with our constant taper preparations, as well as some of the anatomical shaping that we have through the 3D instruments. So that already creates a full-fledged set of files with austenitic and martensitic and max wire metallurgy. And that is really a big mix of files that allows you now to recently try to introduce the endo sequence blend technique, which blends the best of several different files into one comprehensive and robust system of instrumentation. I will probably make some more videos to talk about each file system and what are the indica indications and where they could shine best. I'm sure that is something that would be helpful to you. But uh, in the meantime, you now have this option for those of you who are interested in variable taper preparation to use these files. And uh, please write down your comments below and let me know what you think about them. And after you've tried them, let me know what you think if it's been helpful to you. But key here is to make sure you have enough of a path before you start using the files, using hand instruments and the rest of it with this highly flexible set of instruments you, you will be able to achieve very predictable and nice shapes. So that does it for uh, today. I uh, hope this uh, video was helpful to you. And uh, again, don't forget to share the video if uh, you find it interesting and uh, also to write down comments and uh, let me know what you're doing and how things are going. And for in the meantime, uh, for Real Dendo, I'm Ali Nisse and let's save some teeth.